I would like to welcome uh, Professor Edzer Dernst, uh, who is originally from Germany, spent most of his career in the UK, and um, very prolifically published on the subject. Uh, with many books and awards and articles, and today he's um, talking on the subject of alternative medicine. And uh, we're very much looking forward to your talk, Edzard, so the floor is yours. Please feel free to begin when you want. Hello, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. And uh, I go straight away into my talk. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm, I'm going to give a little uh, bit on background. Um, I'm going to talk about research, research activity, research questions, some findings, and then uh, most importantly, in integrity with the subheadings, methodology, researchers, and published papers, and eventually come to some conclusions. Next slide. That's about me. I studied medicine in, in Germany. My first post was in, in a homeopathic hospital. Then I became a normal physician, conducted uh, quite a few years of basic research, became a specialist in rehab me medicine, uh, then chair in rehab medicine in Vienna, Austria, and eventually came to Exeter, uh, where I was chair of complementary medicine. There I built up a team uh, of um, about 20 co-workers. Um, we published plenty of papers. Um, um, I got some re rewards. And since about 10 years, I'm retired and emeritus professor of Exeter University. Next slide. Uh, for those uh, who want to know more about me, uh, I've, I've published a memoir, uh, which uh, Nature once called A Clarion Call for Medical Ethics, which is uh, very, very nice. Next slide. About uh, the ter terminology related to alternative medicine, in, in Exeter we called it complementary medicine. Before that, people called it French medicine, some people called it holistic medicine, integrated medicine, natural medicine, and nowadays I call it so-called alternative medicine and SCAM for short. Next slide. Why I do this, uh, if a therapy is, doesn't work, it cannot be an alternative to anything. And if a therapy does work, it belongs to evidence-based medicine. Therefore, I think that SCAM is really the, be the better term and uh, next slide. And I also think so because I once published a book called uh, SCAM. How do we define it? Um, interestingly enough, there, uh, there's not one generally accepted uh, definition of alternative medicine. For the purpose of, of this talk, I define it as an umbrella term of a diverse range of therapeutic and, we often forget that, diagnostic modalities which have little in common other than being excluded from mainstream medicine. And it goes from A to Z. Somebody uh, counted over 400 different modalities under this umbrella. Next slide. More background. Uh, SCAM is popular. That's uh, something we all know. Next slide. It shows you some actual figures and it shows you that actually in the UK it is not that popular. Um, about 20% of the general population use it. If you look at patient populations, this can go up uh, to nearly 100%. Um, uh, interestingly, Germany tries to dominate the world yet again, uh, albeit the alternative one. Uh, the, the highest figures in Europe are achieved by, by Germans who uh, use it uh, at, at a 40% rate. Next slide. Um, more background. Uh, consumers pay out of it uh, from their own pocket, at least in the UK. The press has an insatiable interest. Consumers are bombarded with uh, misinformation. Doctors 
normally have very little interest uh, and many people religiously believe into it and uh, VIPs promoted next slide shows you some of these VIPs uh, uh, we have uh, Dr. Olds who's just running for uh, to, to, to become uh, a congressman in America uh, we, we have uh, uh, Mr. Holt, who, who believes in homeopathy, uh, Prince Charles, who believes in anything alternative, um, Olivia Newton-John, who just died of cancer, uh, which she partly treated with alternative medicine, um, Arnie Schwarzenegger, who promotes chiropractic, Gwyneth Paltrow, who earns quite a bit of money on uh, selling quackery, uh, Montagnier, who promoted, uh, it's not quite clear whether they actually promoted, but supported um, homeopathy, and uh, Linus Pauling, who invented also molecular uh, medicine. Next slide. Research. Um, first subheading activity. Next slide. People think that there is no research that's quite wrong uh, i've recently looked up these modalities and found uh, um, almost forty thousand publications on medline nine thousand on chiropractic etc etc next slide particularly impressive i, I think no uh, one back uh, particularly impressive is is the amount of TCM, uh, traditional uh, Chinese medicine. Um, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming back because I, I, I find this really quite concerning. I'm coming back to that one. Uh, next slide. If you think these, these figures are high, I just want to remind you that they're actually relatively small. Uh, the, the, these are the, the figures for, for the subject of pharmacology. Uh, 6 million uh, in pharmacology, 9,000 in chiropractic. There you, you, you see uh, quite a big difference. Next slide. And of course, these are not clinical trials. Uh, uh, most of these publications are uh, data free, even. Uh, um, and and Medline is not very good at identifying clinical trials, but my estimates are that we are only have about 2,000 clinical trials of acupuncture, 500 of chiropractic, 5,000 about of herbal medicine, and 500 of homeopathy. But these are my estimates, and they, they may not at all be accurate. Next slide. Research. Um, next slide. Research questions. Um, a huge variety of research questions, really, uh, from what actually is SCAM to uh, do SCAM users with cancer live longer than non users with cancer. Uh, you, you, particularly, sociologists uh, take great pleasure in in researching all sorts of questions which I don't find particularly relevant. The next slide shows you the research question that I focused on in, in those 30 odd years that um, I'm involved in the subject. Does it work? By it, I'm, I mean uh, the specific modality and does it work for a certain conditions, of course. So that, that's... Uh, short question is already a few thousand or, or even more um, specific research question. Is it safe? And crucially, uh, do its benefits outweigh its risks? These were the research questions that occupied our life in Exeter. Next slide. And what did we find or what? Yeah, next slide. The, uh, some of the findings. Um, Surprisingly, some, even though they are very popular, some uh, scams uh, have no, not, not even a single clinical trial to, to back them up. 
classical example is Schussler's Souls, not very popular in English-speaking countries, but, but hugely popular in German-speaking countries with a lot of money being made on it and not a single trial as far as I know. Other example of this category, colonic irrigation lateral shiatsu. Next slide. Um, then we have some scams which um, have been documented to cause significant harm. Uh, examples for that category are spinal manipulation, coffee, enemas, in, um, chelation therapy, some herbal treatments, and acupuncture. Uh, and, and these clearly put the patient at risk. Um, next slide. And here I show you uh, um, a publication from way back in 1996, uh, a large survey on over 4,000 British scam users. And we found the, these are the black percentage figures that uh, about 16% reported adverse effects after spinal manipulation, uh, about 13 after acupuncture, 10 after homeopathy, and uh, about 8% after herbal remedies. The figures in red are the, the actual figures as we know them today, uh, uh, almost 25 years after that. Um, every second person, experiences adverse effects after spinal manipulation. With acupuncture, we were, with our uh, rough estimate, quite correct. It's, it's about 10%, with homeopathy, 20%. And don't ask me why something that doesn't contain anything can cause adverse effects. That's a lecture in itself. And with, with herbal remedies, it really depends whether you, well, which herbal remedy you're talking about. Next slide. I think the most interesting bit here is chiropractic. As I said, 50% of patients experience adverse effects after spinal manipulation. Uh, and this is not even disputed by chiropractors. They, they say uh, that's normal because things have to get a little bit worse before they get better. Uh, and we're talking about increase of pain, uh, referred pain, uh, which which can be quite acute and quite strong and can be strong enough to decrease quality of life. In addition, we have very severe com complications, in, including death. Uh, 500 cases have been reported. I need to mention here that there's no reporting system. So we're looking at, at the tip of a much bigger iceberg. And chiropractors hotly dispute that because obviously... Uh, that is not good for business. Uh, next slide shows you what, what is uh, usually or what is often happen with these complications. Um, that's the upper spine and, 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 and the skull. And you see the vertebral artery, which with certain chiropractic movements is overstretched and then essentially can burst, in which case you have a stroke, in which case you can also die. Next slide. Um, these were the direct risks. I think the indirect risks are much, much more important um, and, and much neglected. I've, I've, I've mentioned the question whether um, users of scam who also have a cancer live longer than non-users. Uh, the answer is no. In, in, in fact, they, they have a, sh a shorter life expectancy. Uh, this is an American publication and, and uh, they show that five years uh, survival is reduced by 50% if you use also some form of scam, which is surprising because it's, it's not the uh, direct harm of scam. Uh, the authors speculate, but it's it's the indirect harm of not taking mainstream oncology seriously enough uh, to get cured. Next slide. And some scams are, are effective, and 
Only these should be considered for integration into routine care. Next slide shows you um, the range of scams that we are talking about. Um, a, a, a few herbal remedies are well supported by um, uh, clinical evidence, some dietary supplements, um, uh, oil pulling, I'm not going to explain what this is, Alexander took technique, massage, pilates, laughter therapy, mindfulness, and progressive muscle relaxation. So, um, uh, and, and this is from a book that is about to be published, uh, where I review 202 different modalities. You must admit that this is not a long list uh, after reviewing 202 different modalities. But some scams are backed up by reasonably sound evidence. Next slide. This is probably the one that is uh, supported by the best evidence. Uh, not quite new uh, meta-analysis I'm showing you here. Um, with 30 randomized clinical trials showing that St. John's Wort is superior to placebo and equally effective as conventional uh, antidepressants, or equally ineffective, one might say. Um, and um, in, in my book, uh, St. John's Wort is actually better because the side effects, if you use it correctly, um, are much less than with conventional antidepressants. Next slide. Um, and this is, uh, uh, I think, the last category of, of, of scams. Uh, they have been tested uh, uh, extensively and have uh, failed to do demonstrate that they do more good than harm. Uh, unsurprisingly, that includes homeopathy. It includes chiropractic, mainly because uh, of the harm uh, side of the equation that I've uh, explained to you, osteopathy, same roughly, and um, reflexology, uh, simply because it's not doing much harm, but it's also not doing any good. Uh, next slide. So uh, now we're coming to the, to the main topic, namely the integrity part of my talk. Next slide. Uh, that's something that you all know, how we, how we might define integrity. Next slide. Uh, and it involves honesty, trust, fairness, respect, responsibility, courage. And as you are all critical, I hope, you might well ask uh, the next slide. You might well ask, what about the integrity of my good self? Um, next slide. It has been called into question by this guy, uh, King Charles, um, who wrote to my vice chancellor, alleging, or his first private secretary wrote to my vice chancellor, alleging that I have uh, breached confidence in, in a document that they were producing. Um, this resulted in, in an official investigation at the end of which I was pronounced innocent, but my department uh, during those 13 months that it lasted, um, the investigation, uh, my department was destroyed and uh, I went in, in, into early retirement. So uh, my integrity has been called into question, but uh, um, Later on, uh, I was cleared of the allegation. Next slide. Um, back to integrity of uh, research into scam and just a few methodolog methodological issues. Next slide. If we want to know whether treatment works or not, we obviously, at least in, in my book, want to know whether it's better than placebo. Um, and there we, we, we have a sizable problem in, in uh, so-called alternative medicine because for some 
treatments, it's jolly difficult to find a placebo. Um, and placebo effects might be actually quite quite important, might be more important in, in SCAM than in conventional medicine. Um, if, if we think of mind-body therapies, chiropractic ma manipulation and acupuncture, we, 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 we don't have an obvious placebo treatment which we can use in clinical trials in order to blind patients. The next slide shows you what we have done in, in Exeter we, uh, to, to solve one of these problems, namely the acupuncture one. We've developed a placebo needle and you, you see the schematic drawing and a picture of the actual uh, device. Uh, the device uh, is glued to the to the skin, and uh, if if you tap on it uh, with the with the real acupuncture needle, it penetrates the skin, and with the uh, placebo needle, it it just implodes in itself like a, a stage dagger, and uh, doesn't penetrate the skin. Uh, interestingly, the the uh, clinical trials that have been conducted with such needles tend to be uh, negative. They tend to show no difference between placebo needle and uh, real acupuncture needle. Next slide. The researcher um, is a tricky business in uh, so-called alternative medicine. Next slide. What do you think about a researcher who spends his life uh, researching his pet therapy, but manages to go through life not publishing a single negative result? Next slide. He must be very special, must he? Next slide. In my view, he's so special that on, on my blog, I I um, created a Hall of Fame for these guys, the Alternative Medicine Hall of Fame. And it's, get, it's getting more and more crowded. Uh, it's work in progress. And the names that you see in red are um, people from the UK. For me personally, particularly remarkable is Adrian White. Next slide. Adrian was uh, a co-worker in, in my department until 2005. And, and under my guidance and, 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 and direction. Um, I, I forgot to say that he was an enthusiastic acupuncturist, a, a doctor and an acupuncturist. So um, um, it, it wasn't quite easy to teach him uh, objective uh, res research where you have to obviously leave behind your uh, sympathy for, for for any particular treatment, but we managed to publish together quite a few trials, and uh, without exception, they produced negative results. You can see that on the left-hand side of the slides. Then we had a major fallout. He left my department, went to another department where he uh, was allowed to uh, do research unsupervised uh, or mostly unsupervised and he managed to publish in, in the following years nothing but positive results. I think, um, well, I, I, I'm, I'm unaware of any better example for uh, uh, to, to demonstrate bias um, in, um, in, in just one single person um, and, and the a most powerful effect bias can have um, in producing um, uh, results in, 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 in scam research. Next slide, please. And on an even bigger level, what do we think of a whole country that is very active in, in clinical research, in, in scam research, but hardly ever publishes a negative result? I've told you uh, how, uh, and I've shown you how active uh, China is these days in producing results of TCM in particular. And uh, 
I'm, I'm of course talking about China. Next slide. Here's something that we published quite a while ago in the BMJ, uh, which disclosed that uh, practically all RCTs of uh, traditional Chinese medicine that we found, and, and we are talking about uh, just under 3,000 RC, RCTs in, in the Chinese literature conducted by, by Chinese people, um, produced positive results. Uh, and that was the first time I stumbled over, over this really amazing finding. And later on, it was confirmed by uh, several other groups. And I, I think at, at least half a dozen other groups confirmed the basic finding that uh, when it comes to traditional Chinese medicine, China very, very rarely, almost never uh, produces negative results, which means either everything works, and we know how unlikely that is, or there's something wrong with uh, Chinese med uh, 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 scam research. Next slide. Um, a few published papers uh, to, to, to give you some actual examples uh, of, of what I mean. Next slide. Um, here we have an exceptionally poor paper, an ob observational study that was aimed, and that's a quote, to examine the effectiveness of acupuncture. Well, ob uh, observational studies, as you probably know, cannot establish that. Um, and, and on top of it, it was a tiny observational study. And the conclusion was acupuncture was found to be effective for the reduction and relief of, of symptoms. Um, th this would be a totally in, unimportant study if that wasn't happening so very, very often in scam research. Uh, the wrong design to answer the research question, uh, a, a tiny study and a, a totally overblown uh, conclusion. Next slide. And that, uh, well, yeah, uh, thanks to yoga, I, I now gently stretch conclusions instead of jumping to them. Um, uh, that seems to be the obvious remark to make here. Next slide. And here we have the hierarchy of evidence. And of course, we were talking of, of very low down in, in this hierarchy in observation study. Um, and everybody, I think, knows that observation studies are not to be relied upon when we want to test for uh, uh, effectiveness of a treatment. What about randomized clinical trials? Next slide. I think we have we, we have the, 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 the same phenomenon of unreliability in in many of the clinical uh, even randomized clinical trials uh, of uh, scam. This one is uh, from Vienna. Uh, Professor Michael Fraas wanted to evaluate whether homeopathy influenced the outcome of cancer patients, and he recruited. Uh, 410 cancer patients, uh, split them up, uh, randomized them in, into two parallel groups. One group received hom homeopathy, the other one standard care uh, um, plus uh, homeopathy. There's a, there's a mistake here in my slide. Standard care plus homeopathy. Uh, and the end point was global health status and subjective well-being. The results, and that's a quote Im, uh, showed improved uh, improvement significantly when uh, homeopathic treatment is administered. Patients improved significantly when homeopathic treatment is ad administered. Next slide. Um, what is wrong? It's it's not as clearly visible as with the observation study that I. 
showed you previously, what, what is wrong with that study design? Well, to put it really simple, um, two amounts of money uh, are always more than one amount of money. Uh, and that is the, 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 the trial design, which I've been banging on for quite a while. The A plus B versus B design uh, has to produce a, a positive result, even if um, A is a, is a placebo, because there's a, the, the, we can expect a placebo effect. Um, but the trial design looks rigorous. It, it, it is randomized, uh, it, it etc. So, so it, it has some of the features of a rigorous clinical trials, but it really never or hardly ever uh, fails to produce a positive result. Next slide. I can say this with some confidence because we looked at, at this systematically a while ago. Um, in uh, uh, with acupuncture, we, we found um, 13 trials that followed this de design, 12 of which showed a significant positive result and one a positive trend. So uh, that's what we would expect according to the two amounts of money versus one amount of money. Next slide. And what about systematic reviews? They are supposed to be the Rolls Royce of evidence-based medicine, producing the most reliable evidence. Well, not necessarily so in SCAM. Next slide. Here we have a um, systematic review published in a very respected journal. Uh, and the review was acupuncture for chronic low back pain. Uh, a meta-analysis of 25 RCTs um, concluding that acupuncture may have favorable effects on self-reported pain and func functional limitation. Um, that all looked very um, convincing, except if you know that the largest trial with 1,162 patients wasn't included for some reason. Well, may maybe because it, it was negative. Uh, and anyway, if, if you do include it, uh, which we later did, uh, the overall results uh, turns uh, to be out, turns out to be no longer positive. Next slide. And that's not uh, just confined to uh, acupuncture, it happens uh, with, with other subjects as well. Here's an example of homeopathy. Um, um, individualized homeopathy uh, was submitted to uh, a systematic review. Uh, 32 trials, 32 RCTs were included and the conclusion was medicine prescribed in individualized homeopathy may have small specific treatment effects. That is surprising. That's a very surprising result. Uh, of, of a meta-analysis because homeopathic remedies, individualized or not, uh, usually don't contain anything. So how can they be better than, than placebo? To understand the result, you need to know that uh, two high quality RCTs were not included. Um, the, the two were both negative. And if you include them into the meta-analysis, um, the results turn out to be negative. Next slide. So, uh, we have doubts about the integrity in the SCAM research, um, um, but uh, we should ask what uh, effect this lack of integrity might have. I believe that the uh, scientific community will, will take SCAM and scam research less and less seriously. Thus, even credible research will be ignored. And uh, some valuable modalities, which one might otherwise find in under this umbrella of scam, uh, might not get the recognition that it deserves. Next slide. I'm coming to my conclusions. Next, 
I've uh, keep this very simple, just four uh, conclusions. Uh, alternative medicine might not be the best name. So-called alternative medicine, I think, is the much better name. Uh, and I try to explain why this is so. I've shown you that research activity is relatively low. Um, so, uh, so some people might be impressed by, by the numbers of uh, studies of acupuncture, for instance, but relative to uh, research activity in other areas, it is really uh, minute. I've shown you that research findings are mixed. By no means everything is negative, uh, uh, but much of it is negative. Uh, by no means everything is safe. Uh, most of it, uh, for, for, for most modalities, we cannot honestly say that uh, the benefits outweigh their risks. And um, finally, uh, I personally, after researching this area for about 30 years, have serious doubts about the integrity of the research and more uh, delicately, uh, the researcher. And that's about it. Thank you very much. I hope you have some questions. Thank you very much, Azard. So I would appreciate if um, all the participants on the Zoom call um, turn their cameras on so we can see you when you ask questions. So you already do have a question in the chat uh from clara and then another question from susan um so would you like to read them and um start with clara's question yes thank you uh so at the anti-cancer fund we often get questions from cancer patients that heard about like now is very popular is uh, cell therapies um and they are being sold at extreme prices. And it seems that there's like no regulatory um, thing that can be done. And also as, as Professor Ernst pointed out in, in his uh, presentation, uh, it's a uh, chiropractic. There's also that have been there, um, but it seems that on a regulatory level, nothing can be done. So how could, Europe play a role in this? What can be done in order to stop these practices? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Regulation is, is, is really a, a difficult subject for me. Uh, 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 to, to put it bluntly, even the best regulation of nonsense will result in nonsense. Uh, and and, and that, that's... Uh, for me, the main problem that we have with, with regulation. And alternative practitioners have a schizophrenic attitude towards regulation. On the one hand, they they uh, love to be regulated because it gives them some veneer of respectability. On the other hand, if you regulate uh, alternative practitioners properly, by which I mean uh, regulate them such that they have to abide by the rules of evidence-based medicine, you regulate them away uh, because uh, uh, then a homeopath cannot possibly uh, practice homeopathy anymore, uh, to use just one example. Um, having said all this, uh, obviously one needs some form of regulation to protect consumers and patients from the, from, from the worst uh, excesses of, of quackery. Um, um, and I, I wish I knew how to do that. Um, quite honestly, I don't. Thank you, Azard. So there are a few comments from Francois in the chat that might help you, Clara, with <laughs> some answers. But how about we go for Susan next because you posted your question and then David. So Susan, please go ahead. Uh, in, a, in a way, it's the opposite question, um, which is to show goodwilling and integrity and benefit uh how come we can't get those remedies that have been shown to work into practice into the nhs uh, partly because they're useful 
and partly because they really, really, really show up all the rest that don't work uh, in the sense that, you know, here you are, Professor of Complementary Medicine, here are some, you know, here's a little small box of tricks that work and all those that don't. But why, why can't we get, why can't we get that small list onto the night, onto nice? Um, I, I often wondered myself, but uh, nice is 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 totally reluctant to to even touch it. Uh, alternative medicine, and I I was inofficially told uh, by by somebody very high up at, in 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 nice that um, uh, um, our present king uh, prevents that. Um, so, I don't know whether the, the, this is this is true. Um, on a on a more cynical note, somebody said in medicine we make progress funeral by funeral. Uh, I guess my opinion would be just from being within Nice is that it is actually cannot be in scope for technology appraisals because of uh, price. This is not an expensive medication which impacts. Um, which is comparable to current oncology therapies where it is, it, significant budget decisions need to be made. Another question and part of guidelines, but uh, here uh, I think that it's much better for NICE to stay completely clear because as soon as they touch one alternative medicine, there will be inquiries, why not the next? So it's it's out of remit, I suppose. Yeah, uh, if if we talk about guidelines, it's, it's, it's slightly different. I was I was uh, uh, talking of spe specific evaluation of nice evaluating homeopathy, for instance. Um, yeah, so yeah, and uh, it's it's really a huge thing is budget impact because nice actually does not evaluate or historically has not been evaluating absolutely everything coming through. So, so for example, uh, hemophilia. Um, HIV drugs were never in the remit for all for different reasons. And there are many interventions that just by scope don't make into technology appraisals. Homeopathy is one of them. And uh, there are many reasons, like many of them you've already mentioned. So, David, please go ahead with your question. Yes, I, I was a bit surprised about your slightly optimistic view of acupuncture, it seems to me the biases involved are so big that there's really no good evidence that works but nice has evaluated it and it's come up with completely different contradictory conclusions according to who was on the guidance group i was on the radio with um a chap called underwood who recommended they, they recommended it for i think non-specific low back pain or something like that then another guidance group came along which who had more pain specialists and they said he do not recommend acupuncture and damn me just recently some other guidance group for some other sort of uh, chronic pain did recommend it i mean they're just uh, hopelessly inconsistent yes um f first of all uh, thank you david I'm, I'm i'm not aware that i was very positive about <laughs> acupuncture but uh, um, um Maybe it's my desire not not to be outright negative uh, that makes me positive about something at least. Uh, and anyway, I, I I entirely agree with you. The the uh, the, the guidelines um, sometimes included and uh, excluded uh, acupuncture. Uh, it might well be connected to which um, experts they they recruit if, if they recruit anybody from my hall of fame uh, then um, th the result is likely to be uh, different than if they re uh, recruit uh, a, a real scientist yes that was very much the case i think thank you um francois your question thank you lisa <clears throat> Uh, um, I wanted to capture your thoughts about one aspect on, on which you didn't touch upon, which, which I think is, uh, I believe is, is a, uh, okay, uh, uh, the favorite point of um, the research in, in SCAM, which is the um, under registration 
and under uh, reporting of clinical trial results. results. So I was involved in the, in the review of uh, the efficacy of homeopathy in France, the, which led to the reimbursement. And when we, we were writing the report, we discovered that less than 10% of the clinical trials conducted in homeopathy were actually registered or reported some results. And this is also not at all reflected in the, in the systematic reviews. So do, do, you have any, do you have any ideas or any thoughts on this, uh, this specific, um, let's say, um, specific misconduct in the field of, of scams? Yes. Um, well, I've, I've, I've shown you my Hall of Fame of, 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 of people who only published positive results. Um, and and I've shown you the example of China, a whole country only publishing positive results in one uh, uh, specific area. How 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 can this be? In in the case of China, I've I've often asked Chinese co-workers. Over the years, we had quite a few Chinese co-workers. Why uh, this this might be? And the best explanation they could give me. Uh, was that in China it is quite unthinkable that a, a, a relatively junior researcher would do something that contradicts the opinion of his or her peers. Uh, it's it's not possible. So, so um, consciously or unconsciously, studies are being de de designed to produce positive results. But that wasn't quite your question. Um, uh, negative results are, are, re remain unpublished. Um, that clearly is, is the case. And, and there are methods to, to get, a, at least try to get a handle uh, on, on this, this problem of publication bias. Um, but, but also uh, negative results are being tortured until they turn out to be positive. And, and there, 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 there are many uh, methods in, in statistics. David know, knows that much better than I do, um, how to achieve that. Um, and, and lastly, um, th th there's the most delicate question of fraud, uh, uh, fraudulent uh, res research. Um, happens sadly all the time not just in scam but uh, ev everywhere and um, um, perhaps in, in scam it is more more prevalent and not publishing uh, a study for which um, uh, people have paid for and and patients have have, have given their time and perhaps even more uh, towards um, is in in my view fraud the, the the mechanism to to avoid this or minimize it is uh, registering clinical trials so so people are, are are working on on minimizing all these um adverse uh, uh outcomes but the world is not perfect and we are we are clearly uh, far from uh, uh, totally eradicating uh, uh, fraud uh, in particular. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you, uh, Edzard. What do you think is the key contributor to the popularity of SCAM? Is this um, a financial profit because it's very well financed by the companies who want to push their either hemopathic products or some other products um, to the market or to people. Is this the failure of traditional, um, well, traditional mainstream medicine, uh, interventional medicine? Um, or is this really poor um, education of general population in general who don't want to question and prefer um, following well my grandma used to do that so let's just use that so mm -hmm. out of these three it's 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 all of that and and, and much much more um there, there, there's clearly not one single reason for for the popularity of of scam and 
um, if you if you ask different people, you get different answers. Somebody who's who's essentially healthy and probably quite wealthy has uh, totally different reasons than somebody who's clinging to the last straw and and uh, who feels that uh, mainstream medicine cannot help anymore. So so there the, the vast is a vast array of of different reasons and 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 they uh, need to be weighted differently for different populations one reason that we haven't mentioned yet which i think is is quite important uh our journalists uh the the, the sort of rubbish uh that is being published uh, about certain treatments um and and uh uh, VIPs like and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, King Charles um, um, do their fair share in in misleading the public, uh, and, and and I think that that is much more important than generally recognised. Thank you very much, Edzard. Very educational talk. I learned a lot. Uh, I hope other participants did so as well.